Santa Barbara Invite is the first in-season tournament on the West Coast. This tournament showcases who the early frontrunners are in the Southwest and Northwest regions. It's still early in the season and teams are still developing, but if a team does well at SBI, it's a good indication that they'll be one of the favorites heading into Nationals. The first games of the tournament are held on Friday, since BYU is in attendance. They aren't allowed to play on Sundays due to their school's religious guidelines, so they opt to play a few games on Friday instead. Since they can't play on Sundays, they never win tournaments and don't go to nationals. Regardless, BYU plays at an extremely high level. They're ranked fifth in the national preseason rankings this year and are the two seed in this tournament. Since they don't go to nationals, they're a good benchmark. Being in a competitive game with BYU means you're likely a national level team. And if you beat BYU, then you're on track to winning the national title. But since BYU lost most of their seniors, and they might be a little overrated by OT World, the benchmark might actually look more like this. The first game was against the hosts, the UCSB Black Tide. Both teams mainly ran a vert stack for their offense, only deviating when running a pole play. Defensively, BYU Kai poked from the front of the stack and covered the lanes. Black Tide seemed to just stick to hard man while occasionally running a 3-3-1 zone. BYU offense and defense runs on their physicality, and it showed early, with Kai putting up three straight breaks to go up 4-0, and eventually leaving the score at 8-2 at halftime. But, coming out of the half, something sparked inside UCSB. Instead of rolling over, the Tide stormed back. They double broke BYU, not once, but twice, going on a 6-1 run, making the score 9-8. But BYU managed to get a double break of their own and were able to hold off the Tide. For an unranked team like UCSB, who was projected to lose by nine scores, to be within one of Kai late in the game and almost pulling off an upset is impressive. Kai's struggles continued in their second match of the night against Slow. Look out here, boy. Get that it's broken! Slow liked forcing middle and covering the lanes on defense, while their offense usually ran out of a split stack into a side stack. This opened up big space in the middle and allows the offense to it's easily broken! attack the open space. <gasps> Kai continued with a similar offense and defense they put up against UCSB, but couldn't keep up with Slow Core's offensive spacing. You win black. Slow controlled the game, scoring breaks with ease. They scored three out of their first four starting D points and took half with a score of eight to four. BYU couldn't score a break in the second half and lost the game 14 to nine. Slow ended the game with six breaks to BYU's one. So with the showcase games out of the way, it's time to move on to Saturday pool play. At SBI, there were 20 teams, so there were four pools of five teams. This pool went as expected, with Slow taking the pool and the highest point differential of 29. The closest game of the pool came between the number nine seeded Thunderbirds and the 10th seeded Oklahoma Christian Eagles. The Thunderbirds led 12 to 10 after soft cap and were poised to close out the game. <laughs> but the Eagles rallied and rattled off two breaks, setting the stage for Universe. It's broken. But British Columbia was able to hold steady and easily scored, winning the game 13 to 12. Chicago was able to beat Grand Canyon 11 to nine, breaking seed and getting the fourth place in the pool, while Grand Canyon got fifth. Oregon Hanley took care of their pool, edging out slow in the highest point differential with 30, the closest game coming between UC Santa Cruz and Victoria, where Victoria came out victorious 12 to 10.
Even though the Ursa Majors had the easiest pool in the tournament, they still took care of business and beat Oregon's point diff with 31. The closest game of the pool came between Cal and the Zion Curtain. It was a close game throughout. Cal's number double zero, Gavin May, caught four deep hucks, three of them being scores. And Cal's number 14, Dexter Clyburn, completed five assists, three of them on the deeps to Gavin. Cal's offense was too strong, and they beat Zion 12 to 10. Seeing BYU's performance the night prior, it was no surprise that their game against UCSD Squids was a close one. They narrowly beat the Squids, winning on Universe. Scraped past UCLA by two, but lost on Universe against Washington. If the Kai didn't absolutely demolish Northwestern, they would have had a measly two-point differential. But to be fair, the Air Squids had an incredible tournament despite their 1-3 record. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of their games, so I don't know how they played. But what I do know is that a 13 seed taking teams like BYU and UCLA to Universe is impressive. Also, the reason Washington is in last, despite having the best point differential, is due to the tie-breaking system. First is the record between the tied teams, then the point differential between their games. And if there's still a tie between two teams, whoever won the head-to-head -head matchup breaks the tie. Now that we're done with pool play, it's time to move on to the most important day of the tournament. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. In the first round, there were no upsets, and the closest game was two scores between Utah and Oklahoma Christian a game I don't have footage of. The higher seeds held strong and moved on to the quarterfinals. No upsets in the quarterfinals either, but the game between UCLA and Utah was a defensive grind with UCLA beating Utah and Universe. I don't have footage for that game either since Ulti World recorded the Oregon-British Columbia game instead. In that game, Oregon led with a break early, but the Thunderbirds were still in it, keeping up with Oregon's offense. That was until the T-Birds' third and fourth possessions on offense, where their drops came back to haunt them. This led to a triple break for Oregon and a 9-3 halftime. British Columbia was able to bounce back with two quick breaks out of the half. It's broken! But Oregon got two more breaks. It's broken! Then broke to win, 15-9. Moving on to the semifinals, Oregon was able to handle Cal, and in the UCLA vs. Slow game, Cal Poly turned the disc on their first possession, where UCLA took advantage, scoring the first break of the game. Unfortunately for UCLA, that was their only break of the game. They woke up a sleeping giant, because Slow went on to rack up four straight scores, then went on to get a double break at halftime, putting the game out of reach, winning 15-7. Other than that first possession, Slow's offense not only didn't get broken for the rest of the game, but they didn't turn the disc over once. UCLA's offense, on the other hand, committed 12 turnovers, half coming from Slow's defense and the other half from UCLA's mistakes. With the semifinals finished, we have the anticipated finals matchup between the fourth ranked Slow and the seventh ranked Oregon. Slow committed two turns at the start, but Oregon couldn't convert, and Slow was able to score first. On Slow's second possession, they also turned the disc. Twice. But Oregon still couldn't take advantage, and Slow was able to hold. Eventually, Oregon started turning the disc over, and Slow were the ones that were able to convert, scoring on back-to-back -back breaks, making the score 5-3. Slow ran their offense like they did all weekend, 
coming out on a split stack and attacking from a side stack. Oregon stuck with their defensive strategy of sitting in the lanes on the pole and going into man for the rest of the point. Slow tried to mix things up on defense, playing in the lanes in man, forcing middle, and occasionally throwing in a 3-3-1 zone. Oregon's offense usually ran their pole play in a vert stack, often making cuts from the front or middle, and then flowing from the back. If they weren't in vert, they would run hoe, usually against the lanes look. Slow started to run away with the game, breaking for a third time to go into half 8-4. Slow continued with their momentum, scoring a break after the half, and then scoring on this goofy play. Eventually, Oregon was able to get a break of their own, making the score 11-8. But for some reason, whenever a team gets a break on Slow's offense, it lights a fire under the whole team. We saw it in the UCLA game, and we saw it again here. here Slow didn't let Oregon see the end zone again, holding on the O-line and then scoring three straight breaks to win the game 15-8. I think this game came down to who could convert their defensive possessions. Oregon had four chances early, but couldn't punch it in. And when Oregon started to turn the disc over, Cal Poly didn't let their opportunities go to waste. It also didn't help that Oregon started to throw up bad hucks at the end of the game, trying to catch up. This led to Oregon having over twice as many turnovers as slow. As you just saw, there were a lot of games that had no footage, and nothing really to mention other than the final score. This was because Ulti World can't record every game and USAU doesn't keep track of stats or live scores. That's why I need to rely on you guys. I need as much help from the community as I can get in order to keep making more and higher quality videos. I made a discord where the college ultimate community can share footage, game scores, talk about tournaments, share pictures, make memes, goof around, or just hang out. I don't think college ultimate players have a place to congregate. So I think this discord would be a perfect place for that. The Discord link is in the description, and let me know if the link doesn't work, because on the last video it was kind of bugging out. Like the video if you liked it, or dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment letting me know if I got anything wrong so I can improve. And always, lay out.